Hello and welcome to an enrichment lecture. Today the topic is actually infinite series or just generally series. What's our objective is to actually find the sum to infinity of this particular quantity. It is definitely a five star question. You're not likely to see that in a standard A level exam. It is a five star question and you can find this question in other very similar but also uh, variants of other sums to infinity and the booklets uh, in my website of course booklets advanced this is actually university stuff and there is a book called series which you will find a lot of other stuff in there as well and uh, you can also find this particular question under standard uh, various and I'm not going to give there the actual name of the booklet because some people might want to have a go at this before I give any clues and uh, this will actually give you a clue what topic is involved in here okay it's a year 13 topic um, that this question is based on so let's uh, if you want to pause the video and have a go at it fine otherwise now I'm going to put the actual title there of the booklet is binomial the standard binomial expansions to uh, negative and fractional powers is what the topic is all about. Okay, so let's start uh, thinking about this question. So before we um, we attempt it, it is good. It's a good idea to actually write the, the binomial expansion somewhere for reference, so we can actually see what we have to do with this one. So of course, I'm, I'm going to squeeze it here. So. And let's write it in its simplest form, really. Um, you could have written, of course, 1 plus ax, like this, to the power of n, is equal to. But I will keep it uh, uh, a little bit simple and just put a to the x for the time being. And of course, if I need to adapt it, I will stick the a um, uh, if I need it. So that's going to be 1 plus, we start with the power, n x plus n n minus 1 over 2 factorial and then we're gonna have of course x to the power of 2 I don't actually need a bracket that I'm writing it plus n n minus 1 n minus 2 over 3 factorial and the x goes cubed plus dot 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 forever if this is not a positive integer so this is the, just the generalized form of the binomial expansion or if you want the Maclaurin expansion or whatever you call it. So we're looking at this particular um, expression and we're looking for some clues as to where do we start. A lot of the work on series, by the way, it's, it involves a few tricks that once you see them, you can apply them in a similar kind of questions or uh, and uh, if you haven't seen what what's going on in there, uh, the first time it's kind of difficult to see, but it's not actually that bad. So. I will start first of all by calling this particular um, sum to infinity s for sum. So my intention is to find the value of s. For questions like this, if you were experimenting for the first time, it's worth looking at these quantities for 4 times 8, 4 times 8 times 12, 4 times 8 times 12 times 16. And um, if you haven't seen uh, terms like this before, uh, you probably wouldn't recognize these are factorial terms. It could have been, for example, it doesn't have to be a 4. For example, 3, 3 times 6, 3 times 6 times 9, and so on. It could be the 5 times table, and so on. So, I'm going to start my manipulation, and you will see in a minute where I'm going with all of this. So, step number 1, still s, to be found, is equal to 2. The first term actually is quite quite hard to, to actually uh, see what I'm going to do. I'm going to write it very stupidly as 4 times 1 in a bracket. And you'll see in, in a while what, what I'm doing. I'm not touching the tops at the moment. 2 times 3. And I'm going to factorize a 4 from each of those two uh, terms at the bottom, out of the 4 and out of the 8. So it's going to become a 4 squared. 4 from there and 4 from there, and inside the bracket, it will leave me a 1 times 2. And you can check, of course, this is correct. 4 times uh, 8 is uh, uh, 32, and 4 squared is 16. 16 times 2 is 32, just uh, to double check that we what we're doing is sound. 2 times 3 times 4, and again, 
4, 4 and 4 pulled out so I'm going to write as 4 cubed and 1 times 2 times 3 and similarly 2, 3, 4, 5 on the numerator pull out a 4 from each of those it's going to give me 4 to the power of 4 and I go 1, 2 times 3 times 4 plus dot 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 so it should be obvious now I've got some factorial terms there one factorial that was that one in there so that's one factorial this is your two factorial three factorial four factorial so on so we are kind of getting some of these quantities this factorial of course this I could have written it as n over one factorial x squared if you want so that is the the term that I got in there I don't have my one so that could be a problem, but we'll see if, if, if it becomes a problem, what we're going to do about this one. Okay, so let me move to the next line. So, so far, all I'm doing is I'm merely rewriting these terms in factorials and just try to see what's my next move after this one. So, 2 over 4 times 1 factorial plus 2 times 3 over 4 squared times of, uh, 2 factorial and so on and uh, while I'm doing this maybe you can think what should be the next step for something like this okay at the bottom of these fractions I should only really have factorials and I have I should be a cube there 4 to the 4 it should only be factorial, and so I've got these powers of 4, 4 to the 1, 4 squared, 4 cubed, 4 to the power of 4, and so on. So somehow I need to lose those. One way you can lose those, and sometimes it's worth experimenting, so I'm going to say, okay, maybe I can write them as fractions on the top, so that's 2 over 4. For example, I'm not saying this is correct, or there you go, definitely it's correct, actually. It is correct, but I don't know if it's going to take me anywhere. So it's going to be 2, and maybe I can put each of these fours underneath each of those uh, numbers. So I can write as 2 over 4 times 3 over 4. So these fours are the 4 squared that I wrote on the top over 2 factorial plus, let's do one more just to see, does that help? Is it something which is sensible or is it just pants and uh, maybe we have to think of something else? Okay, let's go up to here and just look at the... Uh, this expansion up here in the factorials. The factorials are good on the top really if you look at what we we got up there. If that has any chance of being a binomial expansion this should be reducing. I mean I cannot see uh, reducing by one two quarters to three quarters and this is like two quarters, three quarters, four quarters. It'll be going five quarters on the next one there is no relationship of one. Don't worry about going up so much because going up you can easily go, make it go down by putting minus in front of it. But that gives me another idea now. So this is clearly not a good thing to do. So let's think what else we can do in order to make progress. I forgot to write S at the front. So let's write the S as well. S is equal to. So I'm going to rewrite it. Remember I want to leave the factorials on their own at the bottom. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave the 2, that's the 2 there, over 1 factorial, and I'm going to write this 4 that you see at the bottom on the denominator as 1 quarter, like this, next to it. And of course, I can do the same thing with all the other terms. 2 times 3 over 2 factorial, and the 1 over 4 squared, I can write it in this fashion, that's quite good actually, it looks like a nice pattern now. Plus, two, three, four, let's try this uh, particular version and see, uh, does it get us somewhere? Quarter, cubed, and let's do one more, two, three, four, five, four factorial, and one quarter to the power of four, plus dot, dot, dot. Okay, we got, <clears throat> something now which looks great in fact these quarters the way I wrote them if we look at the position of the x's oh by the way this shouldn't be a square there 
I think it became a, a squared once I when I wrote it in a in factorial notation a few minutes ago. Should be to the one, of course. Okay. If you look at the brackets, quarter. Let's put the one here. Quarter squared, quarter cubed, and so on. So this is like your x, if you want. So we try to identify different bits from this particular expansion. So that's your x, x squared, x cubed, and so on. So the question is, okay, these are the factorials. These are my x's. What are these quantities two, three, four, two, three, and so on? Well, it can only be this, but uh, there's a little bit of a problem. This should be going down. It shouldn't be going up two times three times four times five. We can easily make them go down. So long as we have a minus, minus two times minus three times minus four and so on, this will be fitting now this particular pattern. So uh, I'm not gonna wrap this off and just do it on this line. I'm gonna go one line further down and start putting my minus and see how this works now. Okay, still less is equal to, um, let's put, uh, I'm gonna use actually, I'm gonna do it in, um, in uh, red pen. So two over one factorial, one quarter to the power of one, plus because I'm gonna put in minuses, I'm gonna put brackets. So two, three over two factorial and so on. You can see what I'm doing. I'll just leave a bit of space. I haven't put the minus signs yet. So essentially, uh, I'm just copying the line from above and doing nothing for the time being. Just bear with me for a second because I want to make sure we all follow the, what I'm doing in particular, how we're going to check that it does work. It's very easy to make mistakes and things like that. I should be sorry, two, three, four. I didn't fill it in at all. And then we've got two, three, four, five. Should be the four factorial of the denominator and the one quarter to the power of four, two, three, four, five. So that's exactly the same so far, but now I'm gonna put the minuses. Okay, we start with minus two. Minus two times minus three. Minus two, minus three, minus four. Now it's going down, so that's good. Okay. But of course, we must match the signs right at the very top. We've got a problem. If you look at this very last line, so so far, just to make sure you follow, um, we have the factorials sorted. We have x's to power one, two, three, four, and so on. Um, we've got the numbers going down by one in each term. There's two things that are a problem. First of all, this one, which we're missing, that's not that difficult. We can sort that out at the end, but we have problems with the overall sign. If you look at this particular term, which of course is the two over four, this gives us a negative, and here is positive. The same way, actually this one does work, because of course this is overall positive, and goes positive. But this term that's got to come back to positive is now negative, three minuses. So it looks like we got problem with some of the terms. Can, how can we sort that out? After we squeeze our brains and perhaps uh, is um, after a little bit of hit of miss, we should realize the, the way that this works is if we stick a minus also to the quarters. And let's check it if it works like this now. Minus times a minus will give you plus. Now careful because this minus is gonna be squared. So it's gonna go plus minus times and minus a plus, so that stays plus. But if you look at all the old terms now, three minuses here, three minus from the cubing, is altogether six minus with an even number of minuses, which will return you to plus. And of course, this one is all good. This will not square out. We will go to, the, to a positive number, because it's an even power, minus minus a plus, and everything now works. So now we have made progress. What we're seeing in there is the expansion, if we look at carefully and compare it with this, is we got the expansion of one. Uh, this x is the minus a quarter, so let's write it as minus a quarter here. 
and to what power remember the power is determined by the um, this this number here which is the n on this term so to the power of minus two but we still have that problem okay in order to have that we need a one right at the front that is missing we don't have that plus one that's not the problem it appears the problem as a problem to start with but we can add a one no problem is that correct well it would be correct if we also put a one to the left hand side of this equation that's definitely correct one plus the sum to infinity that i'm trying to find is equal to this expression and we know this expression now let me go one line further down one plus s on the left is equal to and what is it equal to it is equal to one minus one quarter to the power of minus two that's what i'm looking for if the, the one is there and now we put the one it's all good so after that it's just tidy 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 one minus a quarter is of course three quarters and three quarters needs to go to the power of minus two and three quarters to the power of minus two is squaring it and flipping it so it's going to be 16 over nine so my sum plus one is equal to 16 over nine and of course if i i'm going to stick it down here somewhere my sum if i subtract the one now from the total that i've got in there is to give me seven nines and i think that's absolutely gorgeous because if you think about it uh, it's not easy to actually it's not a geometric progression or anything like that that you can perhaps uh, look for common ratios as the standard formula to do this this you must really work with the more advanced techniques the sum that we're trying to find which is on this line here i'm going to put in a box it turned out to be exactly equal to seven nights okay i hope you enjoyed this lecture as always who's laughing now and I hope you join me for another lecture uh, very, very soon, guys. Okay, bye for now.